This video is brought to you by Nebula. If you follow the link in the description, you can watch the rest of this entire series in full right now. In 1965, a young London rhythm and blues band called The Tea Set decided to change their name to the Pink Floyd Sound. In 1966, they shortened it to Pink Floyd. By 67, Pink Floyd were one of the most exciting bands in a psychedelic movement that was exploding around the globe. Their sound had changed from straightforward rhythm and blues to a new kind of music that was cosmic and experimental. Thanks in no small part to the visionary songwriting of lead singer Sid Barrett, the band earned themselves a record deal with EMI and released their debut album. Piper at the Gates of Dawn was immediately celebrated for its relentless experimentation and childlike wonder, but already there were cracks starting to show. For all of his bright eccentricities, Sid Barrett had a darker side too. He was fascinated with psychedelics and began to use them in heavy doses. This exacerbated his latent mental health issues and brought on a nervous breakdown. By the beginning of 1968, it had become clear that the group needed to replace Barrett, whose mental state was fast degrading. Once jovial and mischievous, Barrett had become quiet and withdrawn. He'd show up late for band practices, go through extreme mood swings, and slip into bouts of delirium. On stage, he'd strum one chord over and over again, or detune his guitar mid-song. As Barrett fell further into his catatonic state, his eyes developed an eerie, thousand-yard stare. But Pink Floyd went on without their friend. Roger Waters took over as the band's primary songwriter, and they hired a new guitarist named David Gilmore. Through 69 and 70, the band were deeply experimental as they pushed to find a new sound, and they found it in 71 with the release of an album called Metal. Fully shifted from the bright, psychedelic pop of their early days, this new Pink Floyd sound was marked by warm guitar tones and broad, wide-open songwriting. In 72, they were back in the studio recording their eighth studio album, and when they released it in 73, the musical world changed forever. Dark Side of the Moon dropped to near universal praise and launched Pink Floyd into unimagined levels of fortune and fame. In 1974, the band were buying mansions and sports cars and touring the world. And in 1975, 10 years after the band first formed, Pink Floyd went into the studio to record their ninth album. But the early sessions for this album were fraught. The band had achieved all of their wildest dreams, but found them lacking. This malaise poured over into the studio, turning into a tension that threatened to tear the band apart. But their spirit was held together by one song that they knew could be the centerpiece of a new album. This song was birthed on their 1974 tour, when a four-note guitar lick came to David Gilmore. Gilmore felt that this guitar lick sounded like the lingering ghost of Sid Barrett. That tribute to Barrett grew into an ambitious album that would memorialize his genius spirit and explore the world that stole it from him. In this video, we're going to listen to the album in real time as we uncover its story and learn how it remains relevant to this day.
Shine On You Crazy Diamond held Pink Floyd together long enough that they could make Wish You Were Here. But that doesn't mean that recording the song was a seamless process. The band workshopped the song for the better part of a year playing it live, and then the recording process took a number of days. On top of this, David Gilmour and Roger Waters were at odds about how they thought the song should be structured. Gilmore wanted Shine On to be a single 20-minute song, like Echoes from their 1971 album, Metal. That song would run across an entire record side. But Roger Waters had another vision. He thought the band should break the song up into two parts and use them to bookend the album. In the end, Roger Waters got his way, and Shine On became the opening and closing track of Wish You Were Here. This decision has a thematic impact on the album. Wish You Were Here isn't exclusively about Sid Barrett. Throughout the album, Pink Floyd expressed a number of themes, including isolation and loneliness, capitalist alienation, and mental illness. But the sequencing of the album frames all of these within the context of Shine On You Crazy Diamond, a song tributing Sid Barrett. In a way, it's as if the song is opening a door to peer into Sid's soul. Often, when we gaze into the soul of another, we'll find ourselves looking back. Throughout the first movements of Shine On, the band's main soloists, David Gilmore and Rick Wright, trade a number of solos. In my mind, each of these feel as though the instrumentalists themselves are tributing Sid Barrett in their own way. For Rick Wright, the quietest member of Pink Floyd, that means a gentle lament on the mini Moog. Then, when Wright has had his moment, he gives the stage back to David Gilmour. The third guitar solo of Shine On is a searing cry of pain, exploring what it really feels like to lose a friend to mental illness. To me, this solo has always been a high watermark in Gilmore's career. It seems to perfectly capture the emotional state that he and the band were in at the time, one that Gilmore himself has described as pretty confusing and sort of empty. As Pink Floyd reach their absurd levels of fame, they find themselves reflecting on the friend and bandmate that they had to leave behind along the way. Gilmore's third solo gives way to Roger Waters' tribute to Sid Barrett. Remember when Waters characterized Barrett as a contrast between youthful exuberance and a bleak darkness brought on by the challenges of the modern world. You were caught in the crossfire of childhood startup, blown on the steel breeze. Come on, you target for faraway laughter. Come on, you stranger, you legend, you martyr and child. Waters' lyrics explore the contradictions of Sid Barrett as a character. One who is celebrated for his creative genius, but ostracized for his mental illness. He uses archetypal imagery, characterizing Barrett as some sort of mad seer, cursed by a quest for magical knowledge. You reach for the secret too soon. You cry for the moon. 
This spiritual side is underlined by gospel-inspired backing vocals performed by Vanetta Fields and Carlina Williams. But while Waters shows reverence to Barrett, there's also a clear bitterness about how things ended with Barrett's antics forcing the band to kick him out. Well, you wore out your welcome with random precision Roll on the steel, please Come on, you raver, you see a vision Come on, you painter, you piper, you pressure Here, Waters gives more archetypes to represent the different aspects of Barrett. The painter is his creativity. The piper is a reference to Piper at the Gates of Dawn, but also shows that Waters saw Barrett as a visionary, a leader who could bring people into new artistic worlds. And finally, most tragically, Waters ends by calling Barrett a prisoner. He's a victim of his own mind, trapped behind those black hole eyes. <laughs> The fifth movement of Shine On You Crazy Diamond is dominated by a pair of saxophone solos by Dick Perry. First he plays a baritone, then as the tempo doubles up, he switches to tenor. Paired with an arpeggiated riff by Gilmore, this last movement builds optimism into the song, filling the music with cosmic wonder and joy. For one last moment, it seems as though Sid Barrett's genius is playing out once more, as Pink Floyd channel his memory into a triumphant piece of art. The Sid Barrett that Pink Floyd once knew is long gone, but his impact remains, carrying the band through a new, uncertain time, and inspiring them to create one of the most powerful pieces that they would ever record. But our moment of optimism is short-lived. In the dying moments of the song, as Dick Perry goes wild on his saxophone, the music fades into a hum of mechanical white noise. This ambient sound comes from the School of Musique Concrète, a movement that used pre-recorded sounds from sources other than instruments as the basis for songs. Here, it sets the scene for Pink Floyd to walk us into the heart of the industry that they blame for Sid Barrett's demise. If you enjoyed this video, I've got great news for you. It's part of an entire series that's already up on Nebula. That series is a full companion to Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here album. That means a video that runs completely concurrently, minute by minute, with the entirety of the album. Honestly, it's something that I'm really proud of. I think that it's some of my best work, and the only place that you'll ever be able to watch it in full as you listen to the album with no interruptions from ads is Nebula. Nebula is a platform created by and for creators like myself. Part of the reason we created it was to allow us to have a space where we could experiment and take on projects like this exact one. If you go to the link in the description, you can sign up to Nebula for just $3 a month or 30 bucks for a whole year. There you'll be the first one to watch all of my videos and you'll never need to watch them with an ad again. And if you can afford a few bucks more, you'll also be able to get access to Nebula classes, where all sorts of creators are teaching classes on a whole host of interesting topics. One of those classes is my own, where I teach you the approaches that I use to think about and talk about music. That class will hopefully provide you more insight on how to engage with the music you love on a deeper level, and how to do song analyses like the one that you just watched. So if you want to get started with Nebula, head on down to the link in the description. Following that link does a ton to support my channel, as well as other independent creators. And best of all for you, you'll have an entire 44 minute video on Pink Floyd waiting for you already. Thank you so much for watching.